evening, everybody. Welcome back to Dwayne and Nadia, Food, Travel, and Fun. And it's me, Dwayne, back in the kitchen. And I'm gonna make a recipe I really don't make very often. Uh, I actually make a different version of it when I do. And I'm making fish chowder tonight. And normally I'll make a clam chowder with, uh, with little necks, you know, a little, which uh, are actually quahogs. And we happen to catch some beautiful fish this season. And we have some nice tatog fillets that I, um, that I filleted up a while back. And I have all the other ingredients, so it's like, hey, time to make this very traditional New England style fish chowder. Uh, great thing with chowder is you can do it so many ways. You can use just about any type of shellfish you like. You could, you could even, you can use shrimp, you can use little necks, you can use clams, you can use a uh, wide assortment. I've seen lobster, I've seen so many things. And, um, and there are even, when it comes to fish, different types of fish that work well. You don't want a light flaky fish. And tatog is not that. Tatog tends to, it's also known as a black fish and it really holds together well. I also have another fish that I'm gonna, use next time around when I make it, but not for this recipe, and that's monkfish. It is one of those fish that really holds together very well. It's very meaty. It doesn't fall apart in your chowder, so you don't end up with all these little bits of fish in the bottom of it. Um, speaking of bits of things, I chose to go with a red bliss potato because it really dices up nicely and stays as nice and whole and doesn't just pop, you know fall apart inside the inside the chowder that you're making when it gets cooked up. Uh, this is an optional, I'm using a, it's a Pinot Grigio, it's a nice white dry wine that I'm adding to this as well. And the wine is optional. If you want the wine, you add it. If not, I happen to like the notes that adding wine gives to a chowder because it is, it's gonna be very creamy, it's gonna be very heavy, and it's nice to have something that kinda, just kinda levels that out a bit. So. I am, I am probably going to use a little bit of flour in this, but I'm not going to make it overly thick with flour. Um, I don't have it here on the table, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to add some. But I am cutting back on the amount of butter you normally use. And that substitution, by the way I'm cutting back, is by the inclusion of olive oil. By using olive oil and butter, I can kind of cut each into a, a, a lesser amount and it still gives a nice full flavor to the chowder. And um, I will uh, walk you guys through it. I'm gonna take a minute here, do some prep, cut. I'm gonna di peel and dice my potatoes. I'm gonna dice, I want nice size cubes on the fish, at least an inch square, probably a little bigger than that, but I will um, really chop, mince my onions and my, up quite a bit. My celery, I really want celery in there for flavor. I'm also gonna almost, I won't mince it, but I'm gonna dice it very fine. I don't want big chunks of celery in there in this one. Uh, that's a preference, that's just a personal preference. And the last thing I'll bring, I am including some clam juice and a couple other seasonings, but Old Bay seasoning. This is, I think, the key to making it just, it just breaks out that familiar flavor. So you can substitute Old Bay with a couple other seasonings, but Old Bay is pretty much available everywhere, and I really recommend that is the way to go. So let me uh, do some prep work, and we'll be back in a minute. Uh, as you can see, I've diced up my celery, my onions. I've got my potatoes nice and diced up there. I left, you know, half inch cubes. So, and now I've got my nice fresh tatog and I am going to just slice straight across the fillets. It, it, they, it's nice, clean. You don't want any skin. You don't want any bones. You just want nice, 
clean pieces of meat to work with. The targ's great because it is a, they're a very, like a chunky fish. The pieces of meat that you get to work with are nice and like solid chunks of meat that they really provide. And I'm going for about a good, uh, like a one inch square is what I ended up settling on for these. So I'm gonna get a whole bunch out of these two fillets. Um, about a pound and a half to, or so, at least, at least a pound of fish fillets you're gonna want in this recipe. So, uh, it was a nice size to tog. It was just a, it was just a keeper size. Not, I'm looking at this fillet, I'll tell you right now, it was probably a 16, 17 inch to tog that these came from. They're both from the same day, so I'm sure. That one, who knows, that one looks uh, a little, maybe I got a better fillet that time when I, when I cut it up. And as you can see, it's really, I mean, this knife is, this ceramic knife is very sharp. And it takes a bit more effort than if I were to say be cutting haddock. Haddock, I would practically go through. Cod is butter. I mean, it takes a little, there's a little bit more to this type of fish. And I feel that in a chowder like this, that's what you want. You want a fish that's really got a little bit of, it's gonna hold together for you really well and not just come apart. I'm not looking for minced fish pieces in this. I'm looking for nice, like good bites of the fish inside of this chowder. So, and that's what we're gonna get. And as you can see, it cuts up pretty quick because it was, it was all cleaned and prepped and ready to go and nice and easy to work with. And there it is, that's it. So we have my, my nice pile right here. And there's definitely a, at least a pound here and I'm, I'm thinking maybe a little bit more. Hopefully it's closer to a pound and a half, but it's enough fish to really add some, like to make this nice and hearty along with the potatoes and the veggies. So I did, uh, I am using the black pepper. I'm gonna go with a half a cup of the white wine in it. Um, I am about to do a teaspoon of olive oil and a teaspoon of butter into the saute pan. I'm gonna take these onions and get those, reduce them down a little bit uh, along with the celery. Let those kind of cook down. And once they've cooked down for a few minutes, I'm gonna add in the wine and let that really cook inside the pan. And I want the wine to reduce to about half the amount that it starts with. And let me bring you over to the stove and I'll start showing you uh, those next few steps. And then we will proceed into actually bringing it all together where we actually get the cream mixed in and you know the rest, the, uh, the clam juice and so forth and really make a chowder. So I will be back in a minute. See you at the stove. All right, so I'm over here at the stove. Got my medium heat going under this pan. Got, uh, that's more than a teaspoon of butter. It's probably closer to a tablespoon. And I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of this olive oil. There we go. Let me get these melted down. I can even bring the heat up a little higher for now. Once this melts into the pan a bit, I will get the onion and celery going. I'm gonna get the onion by itself first. I wanna really make sure that onion just reduces down nicely. That's all, so this is all the onion, nice and diced. I'm gonna keep that heat up medium high, at least initially. Once I see it start to get a little bit clear, even just slightly, I'll bring in the celery. So it looks like a good amount of onion in here, and it is but it reduces a lot, so. And we got a long way to go. So let's let this go for a minute or two. It's, uh, it's already showing the first signs of it going clear because I got the flame pretty high. So I can start to smell it. Uh, we can, I guess, hold on for a sec while I 
stir this around a little bit further. But I did, I wanted to use a good sized pan because we're going to be adding a lot of liquid to this. You know, we're going to add a couple of cups of liquid. Yeah, maybe about, you know, a cup and a half of uh, the heavy cream. Another half a cup of wine. We got a couple of cups of clam juice on top of that. Plus you got your potatoes and other ingredients. So, including some fish in the end. So this pan will have a nice amount of chowder in it by the time this is all said and done. Let's see what we got here. Sat in a sizzle. I personally love the smell of onions being sweated down. I'm, a, I'm just a big fan of onions, so. And I think the amount of onion you use is somewhat arbitrary. Uh, it's definitely to taste. If you really love your onions, you can boost it up a little more. I mean, I used, um, I used three good size onions that I diced up in this, whereas someone else might just use two. But I'm a big fan of the onion, and they are already starting to show a little bit of clearing, so. I only used a couple stalks of celery. Um, and like I said, I liked it. I diced it the same as the same size as the onion. I really diced it pretty small as you've seen. So let this go. And I'm gonna bring you guys back when I've got this really reduced down a bit further. It's gonna go for about five minutes and we don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. So you'll get the idea and you'll see how much it's reduced. If you take a nice look at it now, uh, we'll see where it's at in five minutes. Be right back. All right, so here we are, we're back. It's been a good five or six minutes since uh, we're here. As you can see, I'm starting to get a little bit of browning going on, which I don't mind a little bit. We don't really, that's not really the goal here. We're just, it's more about reducing down, but uh, this is my half a cup of wine. I'm gonna add right in. And with the wine, you do work over a good medium high heat. And as you can see, it's already there. And that'll keep any more like browning from happening. And we can keep that heat pretty high. I'll bring it down just a touch. But I'm definitely on a medium high here. Oh, the smell is just really coming out of this now. It's just, this is great. Very nice, very pleasant, this part of it. So we're gonna come back in a minute or two again. As this reduces down, you do. You want to get this wine to reduce down about halfway down from where it's at. It's got a, a little bit of cooking off to do. Won't take too long, but we'll come back and I'll show you where it's at. And as you can see, there you go. Nice little view of it. Just simmering away. Be back right, in so a minute. That didn't take very long at all. As you can see, the wine is really reduced down. I'm going to take, I'm using two containers of the clam juice. So each one's a cup. I'm gonna put in this first cup now. And I can already tell, I think I'm gonna need a little bit more liquid. I am gonna use a touch of chicken stock. Not a lot, uh, there you go. That was about another three quarters of a cup, half to three quarters of a cup. Because I'm reserving the second batch of clam juice for later when I actually wanna make a roux with flour, just for thickening purposes. So I'll have to adjust it, adjust it based on how thick I actually want it to be in the end. But right now, everything's gonna start coming in. Other than, we're not gonna be adding the fish just yet, but we are gonna add all our seasonings. And the way you're gonna judge this is you wanna make sure that your potatoes are covered, that they're not just sitting out there above. Now you can just add water if that's your preference to actually kind of bulk this up. But let me see, it looks like my, it's really close. Let me add a little, another touch more of this chicken stock. That should be good. The, the heavy cream, I'm gonna add separately and I'm gonna add later. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take the heavy cream and use the second pan over here and warm it up before I add it into 
this mix here. The reason being is I don't want it to curdle. So if I were to just add it into like boiling hot mix mixture here, uh, there's a good chance you can get curdling going on and that's really not appealing. I mean, it'll still probably taste fine, but the way around it, bring it to bring it up in temperature till it's just just till you can see steam coming off you don't want to see it boiling and then you know you're very close to that boiling point and it can go into this mix comfortably without actually curdling on in the process and you end up with a, a beautiful chowder so what we're going to do all right so i'm not actually going to measure i'm adding my old bay and easily half a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon. I love garlic, but this really isn't a garlic recipe. So just quarter teaspoon of the garlic added in. This, you can, I really prefer to use a fresh parsley. This is parsley that I grew. And I'm not trying to overload it with parsley. You know, another teaspoon of the parsley mixed in. You're gonna use a good teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half. We'll stop there. I can always add more salt if needed. I want some black pepper in here. Not a lot, it's, it is to taste. There you go, that's plenty. Quarter teaspoon. And the last ingredient, now people will use uh, bay leaf, but our, we have bay leaf, but as you can see, it's actually been ground up to where you can cook with it and you don't have to remove it. If you have the whole bay leaves, you would put one in, you'd cook with it, but you'd want to make sure you got it out before you were done. And one ingredient that I pass on, and this is also personal preference, and this is rarely done, is I really don't like thyme. So I do not use thyme in my recipe. I actually substitute it by using a little bit heavier on the parsley. So, but if you have fresh thyme, you want to add some sprigs of that. You could even add a touch of basil, although that's really not your normal addition to, some, to this particular recipe. So let's uh, lower this flame down. So I'm all the way on low here. Although this burner, I'll show you really quick doesn't go super low. There's still a nice little flame. So it would actually be more of like a medium low on a different burner. But on this burner, that's the low setting. And medium low is fine. You wanna, cause you wanna get these potatoes cooking. You really wanna cook them through. So we're gonna come back in about 15 minutes. It's gonna take at least 10, potentially 15 minutes for these potatoes to cook. And in that time, I am going to take the heavy cream and I'm going to start warming it up in this pan. I'm going to wait about five minutes because it's only going to take about five. I'll start warming it in that pan, getting that close to temperature, and then all of the final ingredients are going to be brought together in the pan and we will, um, I'll show you that when we get there. Okay, so I came back a little bit early. This uh, probably, it's been going for about seven or eight minutes. I'm just now putting the heavy cream on. It's on a very low flame that'll come up nice and slow while this continues to cook the potatoes are still hard they need more time but what i wanted to show you was all right so i used about three quarters of the clam juice i put into here the little quarter cup i added it to this mix and i am gonna this is gonna be my my roux and i am using uh, a good tablespoon or so of flour in to make this, and this is gonna be my thickener. I chilled this clam juice so that it's nice, and it is, so it's very cold. I actually put it in the freezer for a little bit. And the colder you have, the colder the liquid you work with when you're actually mixing in flour, the better it mixes in. It tends to really not lump up so much. The warmer the liquid, the more lumps you end up with, and it just doesn't make as nice a, a roux. It still looks pretty thin, but it doesn't do its thickening until you actually bring it up to a boiling point. So I'm going to mix this in a little bit. It's, as you can see, there's a, there's a few lumps still, but I can still, I got plenty of time to work with here and I'll be able to get all of these little lumps. They will just all be 
See, they're just about all gone. I'll bring that nice and close. And you can see, I think I got like one or two little lumps left. And that's what you want. You want a nice, smooth roux that you add into your chowder. In the end, this is gonna be like one of the last things that I'll add when I'm bringing it back to a boil, along with the fish. Because if you just go straight into there with the flour, it's going to be lumps all over the place and they form hard little, gelat little gelatinous lumps that you just can't get rid of. You really have to have a soup or a stew that you're cooking for a long, long time in order to get that to reduce if you were to do that. But since this is not gonna cook for very long, literally once the fish goes in, it's gonna cook. We're gonna bring it up very slowly. It's only gonna cook for a few minutes till the fish is nice and white, and then it's done. So it's not gonna have a big, long period of time to get rid of any lumps of flour that you ended up with had you just added them directly to this. So as you can see, it's coming along nice. The onions and celery are totally reduced down now and mixed in and we just got to wait a few more minutes for the potatoes to do their thing just i don't want them to break down but i do want them cooked through and i'm looking right now and i've got about they've been in there almost 10 minutes and that's still not enough as i poke them they're still pretty hard so they're going to need at least a solid five minutes more and there will be cooking time available afterwards to really finish them off but at least another five minutes just here just on a nice low simmer doing their thing and they should be they should start to soften up just the way that we need them so i will bring you guys back in a few minutes this should be up to temperature by then and we're going to start adding the final ingredients and actually make All some right, chowder. So See I've let this go for about 15 minutes. I'm going to test the potato. See it gets right through it easily comes goes through the potato but the potato still holds together so that it's cooked through nicely. It's definitely where you got a good chew on it. Um, I added a touch more on the uh, the chicken stock because it was looking a little light and I wanted to show you I brought the cream over here and I've kept that on a, a real a real low burner. But as you can see, see the steam that comes off? So this cream is being held just below a boil. And the cream is the next ingredient to go into this mix. And it's going to return to a boil in a minute here. Put that aside. And now it starts to actually resemble a chowder. I'm, I'm not going to have to wait at all either. I can actually take my fish and start adding it in. Because now it's time for the fish to come in and cook as well. And as you can see, this is a very hearty chowder with a lot. I don't want to stir it too hard because I don't want to risk, you know, breaking things up, there's really no need. This addition of the fish cooled off the mix, so it's no longer at the boiling point. And we gotta let it come back up. And once this comes back to the boiling point and I see a little bit more of uh, the fish changing color, turning to white, I'm gonna add in my thickener. And as you can see, if I stir it up, there's a nice amount of flour. Once again, uh, I've got about uh, close to a quarter cup of flour, maybe a little bit less. So it's between an eighth and a quarter cup of flour. And it all depends as well as how much, how thick you actually want your chowder to be. So you don't have to, so I can actually kind of vary it by simply not stirring it the flour hits the bottom. And whenever I stir this mixture up, that raises up all the flour and blends it back in. This has so been going for about seven or eight minutes. It's really, I, it's on the lowest setting, although like I said, this particular burner doesn't go super low. So it is actually boiling. It does come back to a boiling. The fish is really getting close, but it's gonna need a couple more minutes to finish off. And now that I've got it at that boiling point, I am going to add in 
the last of my clam juice with the flour so that it actually thickens up. I've, I'm just using it all because I've looked at the consistency I've got here and it's a little thinner than I wanted it to be. I want it to be a, a bit more of a thicker chowder. And the best thing to do with these chowders is to not serve them right away. Wait at least 30 minutes. Let it, even more overnight is great because remember you've put different peppers in here, different types of seasoning, and that just blossoms overnight. The flavor really comes through. So I'm really making this for tomorrow night's dinner. And you know what, I may not even, I'll sample it for you guys tonight. I'll do a small little sample, but I think I'd really, if I have a chance to capture this at dinner so we can see the reactions of, you know, what other people think of how the chowder came out, we'll go from there. So as you'll see, it's starting, it is a very hearty chowder. The fish is holding together beautifully. Those are chunks of fish. The potatoes are nice and softened up now with the extra cook time. And now I'm just waiting for that little bit of thickening to happen once it comes back to a boil. I can feel it starting to happen. I'm not going for gravy. I'm going somewhere between a regular stew and gravy, maybe about halfway in, the, in between there. So, and I'm almost getting it. You can kind of tell that if you got a nice thickness to it, and I'm trying to stir very gently because I'm really not trying to break anything up. And it's just about to come back to a boil. Once again, I am working off that, over that low flame so it doesn't come up too quickly. But you can tell if you've got a, a bit of thickness going on when you bring things to the top and they stay there. They don't just sink back to the bottom. So we are definitely getting that effect. This has a nice creamy look to it now. It actually, I'm very pleased. So people think that, oh, it's so super thick and creamy and that's from the actual heavy cream. It's really from the flour that you add the roux in the end to bring it to that. And like I said, that gives you full control on just how thick you like your stew. Oh, chowder, excuse me. So here we are, it's looking beautiful. I am just, see it's just hitting that boiling point again. So let's see how it, so you know what? It's slightly thin. I like it a little thicker, but it's really close. It's really close. So I can increase the thickness, some really cold water with a little bit of extra flour and bring it, add it in and bring it back to a boil. I think I'm gonna do exactly that just to give it a touch more thickening because I like where it's at, but I really am a huge fan of a nice thick chowder. So let me do that and I'll show you what we get for an end result. And then we'll uh, I'll give it right, a try. So you know. as you can see, I use very little water. I use about an, another eighth a cup of flour that I've mixed in. Uh, the, the amount, I use the water from the refrigerator because it comes nice and cold, very cold. And this is definitely hot and ready to go. So this isn't going to cool it down a whole lot, but it is going to bring up that level of thickness that I'm after. So once this comes back to boiling, that's when you finally see the result of the flour you've added. You don't see it prior to boiling. It just doesn't do its thickening until you reach that point. And um, I can start to even feel it thicken up again. I can. Now, people will use cornstarch as opposed to flour, and that's okay. I just find it to be a little less forgiving. Um, you can easily overdo it with cornstarch, and I just like working with the flour to do it. But now, yeah, it pours a lot slower out there. Things stay right on top, really nice. There you go. That is what I'm looking for. So, um, I think put a little bit and want to, I'm going to clean up this little bowl. I'll throw a little bit in there and give it a whirl, try it out, but she's done. So I'll come back in a few minutes, let it cool off a bit. Let it maybe even, it'll even thicken up a little further. And here we go. I turned it off. She's done. I don't want to go too far with the, I mean, everything's cooked. I don't want the fish to start falling apart on me. Although um, the tatog 
doesn't really, not easily. It holds together really well. So let's let this cool for a minute. The heat's off and I'll show you a little sample and try it out. Here you have it. There you go. Now that is fish stew. And now she drips nice and slow. So she thickened up really nice. Let me try this out because <laughs> I've been waiting. Mm. That's a win. Yep, I really scored with this. Oh, creamy, savory. Oh, speaking of savory, um, could use a look. I love it with Frank's Red Hot. I know my wife does as well. And you know, I'm actually able to eat this just the way it is, but tomorrow when I have a nice bowl of it, I'm gonna add some Franks because you just can't go wrong. But everything's cooked down well. The potatoes are perfect. The fish is excellent. Oh yeah. And the consistency is right where I wanted it. So it did take a little bit of extra flour. I came close to a half a cup on the flour. But uh, it's just a little sample and I'm really enjoying it. And we'll see what the family thinks tomorrow. So, so thanks for tuning in. Do I need media? Food, travel, and fun. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Tell your friends. Click the bell for notifications when we come up with new videos. And I will see you next time.